name is Mike Aben and welcome to mission 14 of this KSP campaign. As you can see, we have ourselves another uncrewed mission, something I last did in episode 6 when a probe performed a flyby of the moon. Except this little half-ton beauty isn't going for a flyby. We need to insert it into an orbit. Not just one orbit, two very specific orbits, one about Kerbin and the other about the moon where this satellite will remain as my first communication relay of this campaign. We'll be going for all this despite the fact that this probe weighs only about one-fifth of my probe that flew by the moon. We'll be getting to this probe and mission in all its gory details soon enough, but let's first take a look at this lifter. Design-wise, very similar to other lifters you've seen in this series, though I think there are two things worth taking note of. One, with its tiny payload, this is one of the lightest vehicles you've seen in this series. And two, this is my first use of fairings, specifically the AEFF-1 Airstream Protective Shell, the game's 1.25 meter fairing. Okay, let's take a look at the contracts we've got. In the first one, we'll be attempting to position a satellite in a specific orbit of Kerbin. That specific orbit being pretty close to circular at an altitude of about 15,000 kilometers. An altitude which is higher than that of the moon. The orbit is also to have an inclination of one degree. Although the inclination is small, I figured I should still do this right and time warp until the launch site was under one of the equatorial nodes. I could probably have gotten away with not doing this, but it did give me this rather nice sunrise launch. If you would like to learn more about launching into inclined orbits, you can check out my tutorial on the subject. Also note that the contract requires me to have a mystery goo aboard, which is fine as the second contract is to transmit some science from space around the moon. So after our first contract is complete, we'll be shuffling ourselves over there. Technically, I could have gotten away with just a moon flyby, or even better, an impact. But why waste a perfectly functioning probe? That is why we'll be going for a specific orbital insertion so that this thing can continue its life as a communication relay. We have now had main engine cut off and are coasting to our apoapsis where we will, of course, be completing our low orbit insertion before preparing to insert ourselves into the required Kerbin orbit. Once you're coasting, don't be too hasty losing the fairing. The extra mass means that atmospheric drag will be slowing you down less, but I figure we're high enough now. You can see I like the clamshell mode on my fairings rather than the confetti style deployment. You're also getting the first look at the probe. I placed it on top of a modular girder, which made it easier to get the fairing around the big 1.25 meter decoupler. Once I've unlocked the smaller decouplers, this will no longer be necessary. We'll look at the details of the probe once we've completed our LKO insertion. Despite the lifter having almost 3,700 meters per second of delta V, I still found myself running out of fuel a bit early. There's some extra drag somewhere and I'm blaming the 0.625 meter reaction wheels buried between a pair of fuel cans. I really think KSP gets confused when I use the translation tool and starts adding on the drag of this part. Oh well. Okay, that's LKO with an inclination of a little over one degree. We'll turn normal to expose the solar panels and then start thinking about our injection burn. As the plane of my orbit matches the target orbit now, I can do this burn anywhere, but I want to end up on the opposite side of the moon. So it'd take about a day to get out there. And this is going to expedite the second part of this mission when we start to go towards the moon. Oh, oh, I have an extra button here. Sure, added a periapsis. So you got a mod called Maneuver Node Evolved. And it gives you these two extra buttons here. Uh, point one, this is this one here is to allow you to adjust the amount of the burn and then the little pin menu that's beside it, which I'm not going to use for this one, I'll just do it at periapsis, gives you the timing of the burn. So we can adjust the intervals that we go up and I'm just going to burn prograde and all I want to do is get this, I'm close to apoapsis so it's probably going to be, what's the apoapsis here? That's apoapsis, here we go. 
Okay, a little bit over 15,000 kilometers. So we'll give, oh, oh, that's too much. So we'll turn down the interval. Select our apoapsis. There we go. How far away are we? We're still a little over nine minutes away. Okay. Turn this down a little bit more. Dial this in. I do prefer this to dragging the handles that come with the stock maneuver nodes. I've used this mod once before, but I'll admit I sort of, I was kind of fumbling with it in that previous episode, so here I'm getting a little bit more used to it. I'm still a little bit more used to Precise Node. Precise Nodes is another mod that does much the same sort of thing as this. I think this is integrated into the game a little bit nicer though. There we go. Okay, a little over 15 kilometers. It's an 875 meter per second burn. So let's get ourselves out there. It's a 3 minute and 16 second burn. That's because the thrust to weight ratio on this vessel is a little low. But that isn't a problem. We'll split that burn time in half. So that's a minute and 38 seconds. And we'll burn a minute and 38 seconds ahead of the burn. Take note of the extra information coming down there near the nav ball. That's thanks to better burn time. I've drawn my attention to this mod before, but I really like it, especially these little countdown pips that are coming. Here we go. Nice. The center mass of this vehicle is a little bit off because the antenna is heavier than the mystery goo that's on the opposite side. So it wants to pull a bit to the right here. But the reaction wheels that are built into the probe body don't seem to have any issue holding on to its vector. Coming here towards the end of the burn. Just a little bit more. Just want just over fill. Oh, that'll do it. All right. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm not even going to need a normal adjustment. So with the burn complete, Let's raise the antenna. Before the antenna that, that's built into the probe body is out of range, talk about the probe. We've got three new parts, including my first use of the HG5 high gain antenna. Last time you saw me heading for the moon, I used the perfectly adequate Communitron 16, which is three times lighter than the HG5, but the HG5 is a relay. That is, it can pick up a signal from mission control and relay it to another vessel that's within range. If I want this to eventually be a communication satellite, I have to use a relay antenna. If you want more information on relays and communication in general, you can check out my ranges and signal strength video. The two other new parts in use are the 0.625 meter Oscar B fuel can and the LV-1 Ant liquid fuel engine, which is providing a whopping 2 kilonewtons of thrust, but only weighs 20 kilograms. Because I've kept everything fairly light, the amount of fuel in the tiny Oscar B provides 1,492 meters per second of delta V, more than enough to accomplish what we want. Providing electrical power are eight Oxstat solar panels, I could easily have gotten away with half of that, but I like the look of covering the entire probe body with solar panels. The probe has just over 200 units of electrical storage, which is enough to power the antenna while transmitting. It turned out to be almost two Kerbin days to get out to Apoapsis, at which point it performed the 337 meter per second burn to complete our insertion. And right now, I'm actually watching the contract requirements rather than Kerbal Engineer or the burn indicator. Oh, we are really close now. There it is, contract requirement just went green. Don't need the maneuver node anymore. We'll keep the throttle off. We just gotta wait 10 seconds for the contract to be complete. There it is, all right, contract complete. So that is phase one of this mission. Now it's time to get ourselves over to the moon. We still have 222 meters per second left in the probe. But since this orbit isn't that different from the moon's orbit, this burn should be fairly small. And it turned out just a 33 meter per second burn. Got me the intercept that I was looking for. And in fact, if you take a look at this trajectory in the moon's sphere of influence, it's darn close to being a uh, capture right now. So uh, the capture burn is going to be pretty cheap too. My issue is, is that I'm not coming in 
in the equatorial plane of the moon. And that's because uh, my orbit right now has an inclination of one degree. And of course, the moon's orbit has an inclination of zero. Normally, when doing rendezvous, I don't care too much about inclination. You will get people that will advocate to match inclinations of orbits before attempting rendezvous. Typically, I don't do that. But here, I really do want to be in the equatorial plane of the moon because this is going to be a communications satellite. So I'm going to make my way out to the descending node where we're going to do a one degree plane change. And then we'll reset up this lunar insertion. And I'm going for a closest approach. I'm actually really shooting for specifically an altitude of 1,254.85 kilometers. And I'll explain why I'm going for that specific altitude in just a little bit. But right now, here we go. There's our closest approach, 1,254.9 kilometers. Excellent. That's good enough. And I'm going for this particular altitude because a circular orbit with an altitude of 1,254.85 kilometers above the moon's surface gives me an orbit with an period of almost exactly 12 hours. And that's a nice number to remember. It's a nice number to work with. It's a nice number to calculate phasing orbits for because I'm going to probably insert a couple of more satellites into identical orbits to this one because I'm going to need three satellites to really give me myself uh, complete coverage of the moon. And if you want to learn more about putting uh, satellites and uh, creating communication networks and how to place those satellites and how to calculate these orbits, uh, you might want to check out my uh, communication relays video that I did just a short while ago. All right, we are now in the moon's sphere of influence. It's time to knock off this final contract, which is to transmit some science. We'll open up a mystery goo and transmit. There we go. And oh, oh yeah, my... Uh, 1990s dial-up modem sounds. <laughs> that is the Chatterer mod. Well, nevertheless, the contract is now complete. Even though there wasn't any science to transmit, um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so you can, even if there's no science to transmit, you can still just hit the transmit button. You'll still get it. So all that is left to do now is to get our capture and our circularization. Yeah, I have the Chatterer mod installed. The actual probe's supposed to be beeping, but I had that turned off by mistake. I won't get into why I was playing around with the settings, so I'll try to get more out of Chatterer in the next episode. And what I'm looking at as I'm performing this uh, insertion here is really looking at the orbital period, which is being provided to me from Kerbal Engineer, and I want to get this as close as I can to two days. Ooh, that's really close. Let's turn down the thrust on the ant engine and see how close we can get this in here. I really like to get it in to within a tenth of a second. Just doing little puffs at a time. Oh, we're under a second now. Okay, let's let's turn this down as low as we can go. A couple of puffs. Okay, that's under a tenth of a second from two Kerbin days. I think that's good. So we'll put this on the normal vector and that is it. This is going to be my first communication relay. In the future we'll shuffle over a couple of more so that we can get complete coverage over the moon. And of course we'll do this around other bodies as this series progresses as well but that is looking pretty good. Once back at the Kerbal Space Center, I replaced the two contracts that I just completed, giving me 749,287 Kerb bucks. I really want to upgrade the R&D. That's the next improvement I want to do. The R&D Center costs 676,500 Kerb bucks. That would leave me less than a hundred grand. I mean, it's really tempting. I probably could build a good mission for under a hundred grand easy, actually. But I still have a number of tier 5 nodes left, so there's no hurry. Upgrading the R&D Center does unlock surface sampling, but I'm thinking my next mission might be an all-space affair. In fact, I'm really thinking I need to get some more Kerbals and get some more action happening in low Kerbin orbit. 
fact I'm thinking about a mission that might require both of my two pilots. That'll obviously have to be for next episode. We got some milestones. We have entered orbit of the moon. 22,464,000 current bucks to science three reputation. We have received experimental data from space around the moon. Good work. 42,000 curb bucks, a little bit of science, six reputation. And you have successfully deployed our satellite in orbit of Kerbin. Well, it's not there anymore, but <laughs> I'm still getting credit for this. That's where I was brief it was there. 77,490 curb bucks for science, 12 reputation. And I think with that, I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.